Good morning, everybody. Nice, cool, sunny day here in Coffs. So we got started on um, our cutter kit last week. That's this one here. This one here. Yeah, it's a bit hard to see, but that's the one we, we started with. Um, we used the um, rebate cutter, we used the panel raising bit and the bearing, and we also used the um, spiral cutter. So this week we're going to continue with the other two cutters, and this is what we have. Our, our slot cutter and our tenon cutter. So we're going to start with those this week and have a little play with those. Now we may find you may find that we're going to sort of um, sort of interchange little bits and pieces. We're going to go back and forth because sometimes you have to use that to use that, or you have to use that to use that. And um, again, it's also mixed up with the rebate cutter. So sorry, the the panel raising bit, not the rebate cutter, but but. Uh, Anyhow, this is, just want to show you a couple of things. This is one of the boxes that we made in our, um, our, our earlier series. Uh, it's what we call our trinket box. And in it, there are quite a few different functions that are created by all of the router bits that we've been using. Now, one of the main functions that we're going to do today, let me just go to this camera here, is we're going to cut a step or a rebate in the top, or for those of you who are in America, a rabbit. Um, I think that's how you say it. Um, so that the edge of the, the lid actually rests on that, that shelf. Okay, so it creates a little shelf there. We're also going to clean up the top edges of this part of the box so that that becomes parallel to this, becomes parallel to that, becomes parallel to that, so that everything is flat and parallel. So we need to, need to have that so that when we do make the lid, the lid sits quite nicely on the box. Now, the other thing that sort of mixes in with that is the panel raising bit is used to cut in around the edge here. Okay, so we had to make that panel in the frame and panel lid. So we're going to have a little play with that as well. So um, you're going to see some different functions. Now, in a box that I made during the week, I and mean, you may have seen it on um, Instagram, I didn't have the panel raising bit, I didn't use the panel raising bit to create the rebates for the panel, the frame and panel lid. What I did is I used the, the tenon cutter to give it a nice square edge so I didn't have that little rebate around the inside edge. So we're going to have a little play with that as well. I'll show you what, how that works. So lots of different things. And then we're going to cut some trenches for the parts to fit together. So I love having our new, our new shelf because I can just pick a box up and show you what I, what we're going to do which is which is really really good now as we said last week safety is the biggest thing to look at making sure that 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 everything is done in a safe way so that you don't hurt yourself or damage any of your gear of course if you damage your gear it's going to cost you more money if you hurt yourself well then of course you're going to end up um, not being able to do your woodwork or make boxes whatever so Safety is always paramount. Now, so my first first task, I think what I might do, I might show you these. <coughs> this is the range of, um, this is the range of slot cutters that I that I use. Now we don't carry all of these in the in the kit. The only one we carry is the three point two, which, as you can see, is not very thick it's very thin 3.2 so that's the only one that comes in the kit but you can buy from carby tool 
This one is a little bit more. This one is a, a four mil. And this one here is quite large. You can see it's six mil. They have a range of these. They come in the pack like that. Okay, I did that the right way. So you need to assemble it when you get it. All right. Just pulling it apart and screw that. And the washer goes on the top, not underneath. So let's start. So my first task, what I'm going to do is I'm going to widen a board if I was making a board like this. You can see when you look at it, you can see that I've got a slot in there and I've, I've put a um, basically made a tongue and groove um, joint just to fit the whole lot together. You can also see, if, you get, if we get up close, you can also see I've got a little gap at the bottom there. That allows your expansion and contraction. Okay, so we're going to make one of those. I'm just going to show you how I make them. Okay, they're quite easy to do. Um, what I have is, uh, I have a, a piece of, this is actually crow's ash, and this is a piece of cedar. I'm just going to join the two together like that. Now, to make this wider, you can see that this is much wider than that piece. And the reason for that is safety. It's going to be easy enough to cut a slot in this piece here, but cutting the tenon on that and, and then continuing to do it over a period of time is a lot safer to have a wider board rather than a narrow board. Okay, this is how we go about that. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is cut cut the slot in our piece of timber here. Now I'm going to cut a six millimetre slot. The reason for that is because I want to be able to cut another slot in the middle of that to put the panel. So six millimetre rebate. As I said, we don't carry these. You can purchase these from Carby Tool online. Um, I'm not sure if Jim Carroll has them. Um, what am I looking for? Spanner. Good thing everything's close so if you get lost, I'll be wandering around looking for things. The next task is to find the centre of my board. So what I did with the piece of timber, now this piece of timber has been cut to 30 mil, and it's 12 millimetres thick and I've dressed it all around so it's all nice and neat, it's, it's nice and square and that's the important thing to remember, make sure it's nice and square. So then using my finger gauge I'm going to get an approximate centre. If you're a little bit pedantic about that you can actually get a, a ruler and measure it and give yourself a, an exact measurement. I don't find that um, um, necessary basically because I'm going to cut that and all I, all I need is a wide trench in this piece of timber. So get rid of that. Now the fence that I use with this, I've got, I've got two of these fences. Let's shift that camera to where you can see what I'm doing. I've got two of these fences. Now, the fence is made like this. If you look at the groove in there, I have the groove is a half, a half inch groove that's cut almost all the way through. So don't go all the way through. You want something to stop the router bit from coming out the other side. And that's so that, if you can see this, the shaft of the router bit will go into that slot. Okay. Then, using the router bit, you position the router bit in the table and run it over the top so that it cuts through there. And you can see that it sits into there and then it pokes out the other side. Now all you've got exposed is that little piece of material, that little part of the router bit there, which it gives you quite a safe working area because the bulk of it is underneath. It's under the route, under the fence, so you can't actually hurt yourself with it. So quite a safe little technique. Now, this one's designed for the 
this one here, as you can see, I've taken a little bit more out of it and that has given me um, room to be able to play with my uh, six mil, but it also allows me to move up and down. Okay, so if I wanna move up and with a thicker piece of material and make a bigger, wider slot, well then I can move this up and down if, uh, or move the route a bit up and down once I've got the fence set, okay? So we're going to use the, the big one. As you can see, I've marked it with um, slot cutter six mil and four mil. place. Now before I set things, just want to get my, there's my mark. Unlock it. I'm going to set my centre. Now I'm not going to be really pedantic about it, I'm just going to get it thereabouts. So I'm sort of in the middle, which is fine. And then I can slot that, as you can see, over the top. And the amount of material, the amount of router bit that I have exposed out this side here is only 10 millimeters. Okay, so, there we go. So I have 10 millimeters. Lock that in place. Lock that down. And now it's just a matter of passing that over the top of that. So if I sat that there and I just went over the top of it, there's a good chance of going to get nick my finger with it as well. Okay, so the very important thing to do here is to make sure that you have something that's pushing up against here. I'm going to do that side, of course. So a piece of material that's about the same size is a really good push stick, right? And then we need a push block. The push block has a little cleat on the end of it. It goes on the end and then we can push through that way. So what we'll do is I'll just move that camera around to this side here so you can see that in action as we cut. this. Now, we're all pretty much ready to go. I'll just bring that around. Thank you. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to push that straight through the route a bit. All right. Ears on everybody. Going to be a bit noisy. And there you can see you have uh, quite a nice little slot. Now, if it's not in the middle of the board, it's not in the centre there, Flip your board over the other way and do it again. So, ease on. Okay, let's get back to here. So now you can see it's perfectly in the middle now. All I need to do now is adjust the piece of material to fit in that. Okay, so this is where my tenon cutter comes in. Let me just change a few things around here.
need a different fence. Remember what we did with, I explained to you last week that the, the tenon cutter and the rebate cutter, it's really difficult to see, the angle of the tooth on it was set to um, 8 degrees. The standard one is around about 1 degree, but it's just, this one's set to, to, to 8 degrees, and as you can see, very sharp corner on the top there. I don't know if you can see that. Just put that somewhere there. Now, when we use, when we cut our, our second piece of timber, this pin timber has to go into there. What you need to do is you need to make sure that you have a really nice joint between the two pieces of timber. Okay, So you need to have that dressed up as well, at least one edge of it anyway. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to run that through our tenon cutter. Now you could set measurements for this. Um, I, I generally do a little bit of guesswork. Guesswork with a ruler, eh? How's that sound? So I've, just, uh, I've got just over three millimetres, or just under three millimetres to play with on the edge. My two pieces of timber are exactly the same thickness. Okay, so they're they're equal. So three millimetres. We'll actually take it down less than three mil that three millimetres. Now when we set the fence, if you put your ruler in and push it there, you can see it was just on ten millimetres. See that? Not out of focus. So just on 10 millimeter depth. Okay, so I had that pretty much set nicely. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set the depth cut of, the, of cut to nine mil. I could go nine and a half, but I'm okay with nine. And that leaves that little gap that I showed you earlier. So that little gap that's in the in the in the bottom of the trench there. Okay, so I've got that set to nine. Again, make sure everything is nice and safe. And this time, you can see the safety thing that I've done here is I've got a wider board. So all I can do then, I can just run that straight across there. If you feel a little unsafe about it, of course, use your push block and just push it across. Remember, we're only set at three millimetres or less than three millimetres, so it's not going to take a lot off anyway. So let's shift some of this stuff out of the way. So ears on. Camera back to where we had it before. And you can see I've taken a little step off there. What I need to do is take it off the other side as well. So we flip the board over. Ears on.
Okay, let's test it. And as you can see, that's a little bit snug. Just a tiny little bit tight, so that's not going to go into there. But that's pretty good because what that will mean is that um, we can take a little bit more off and we don't have to sort of cut the bit off because it's too... too narrow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to raise up a tiny little bit. Just test that that's going to take some off. Doesn't have to take off very much. This camera's a problem here. Gears on. So I only took a, a very small amount off and as you can see that now it will fix okay so it goes in nice and neat and very snug and as you can see quite a nice joint okay now what i would do is i would glue that together so i put some clamps on that and then i would cut the excess off and i'll show you how i do that so that's quite snug it's not going to go anywhere so over to the drop saw. Bring up my fence. I would have a mark on here, how wide I want it. Let's say I'll do this at 10 millimeters because that gives you a bit of a, a visual idea of how how it works. So I set that at 10 millimeters. Just grab myself a clamp. Clamp my fence in place. So ears on everybody. Ears on. Okay, let's get that to where we were. And as you can see, now I have a panel. All I need to do then is cut my diagonals on that. Um, I can cut them this way or I can cut them that way. I can have this on the outside. I can have it on the inside of the box. So there's lots of ways that I can use that. But as you can see, I also have that little gap, allow the expansion in the thing, glue that together, and that becomes my wider board. And then I can turn around and I can make that. Okay, so basically that's what we have just about it docking off the ends and, and going to there. What I've also done with this is I've rounded over the edges. So the inside edge is going to have a little rounded curve on it. And then we can go on to the next part. Now the next part is cutting the slot for our panel in this piece here. So I'll get rid of that. So when I do this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my 3.2 because I don't want to take away all of the material. If you if you have a, a, a wide a wide trench in here for your panel, you end up taking away all the support that you've got by putting that rebar uh, the tang into the groove there. So, get 
bit of that. And this is the standard one that we can't, that comes in our kit, the 3.2. Slot cutter, gun ray, where is it? This one. Get the height now. These are the one, two, three, four. These are the parts of the frame. Let's go here. These are the parts of the frame that um, that I built earlier in that same thing you can see you can see what i've done here is i've actually marked all the joints so that they go together and this is my frame and what i want to do is i want to put a a panel into into that so i've got to cut my slot in that frame and as you can see all of those parts look a bit like that the one i just made so now a thinner slot. I've also marked one of these. It had to be the last one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the panel in. The panel's only going to be that thick, so it's going to be quite a thin panel because I want the, 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 the rebate to the, the curve and the top of it to actually come down onto the top of the panel rather than have the panel raise up and have a little rebate in behind it. So I'm just going to cut a slot in there. So set to the height that I have. You can't see that, but I can. Made this hole a little bit too, a little bit too tight. So here we go again. I'll just get my measurement right. What am I looking for? Ruler. I had one here somewhere. There it is. I've got 10 millimetres to play with. I've actually got 11 millimetres to play with there, so I can make this quite safely. I can do this at, at, at 10, 9 or 8 mil, depending on the depth that I want to go. As you can see, that's a bit tight. Okay, so it's actually rubbing up against the bottom edge of the, of the slot. So I actually can't use that because I'm way too high. So what I might do is I might take that off and I might use my other one. Okay, this is the beauty of having having tools that are actually interchangeable. That's better. I'm trying to get it so that I've got on the widest part. No. Now, all I need to do is cut through like so. Now, one of the things that I find that, that, that happens with this is that if you stick your, put your, your um, block onto there and push, what happens is because you're on a diagonal here, you tend to do that which does that, and then you don't cut all the way through, you don't have a parallel cut all the way down the front edge of your, your box. So the idea is to make sure that this little cleat is actually on the end of the board, and that's where it stays. What I do is I push the front of the, the, of the push block up against the fence, and hold that there, and I just use one of my other pieces as my push up against the block, up against the fence. So, just like so and we go through. Let's get that one ready to start. And then we swap that one under here. Okay. So, 
is on everybody. He's on. <laughs> So now you can see all of the pieces have a nice little slot and we sit those together. And you can see, if you bring that down a little bit closer, you can see the trench well, on the inside of that. Somebody says, picture frame. And quite right, it could be a picture frame. So there's another function. This is going to be a, 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 um, a lid for a, a box, but again, picture frame. So now what I want to do is I want to show you what the steps we take to get the rebate into that and the piece of material that I have is exactly the same thickness and so what I want to do is put a piece of silky oak um, into the middle of it. I just need to make sure it's exactly the right size. Now the easiest way to check your measurement is put the ruler into the bottom of the trench so that the end of the ruler just touches where it comes out and if you look on this end here, on that 164, right to the, the bottom of the trench, so if I take a millimetre off, 163 would be the length of my piece of timber. So I need to take a, a millimetre off this. And if I have a width, I do exactly the same thing with the width. That's 120. 123 would be good and that's perfectly the right width I've just got to take a little bit off the length I need to go back to 163 I've got 165 at the moment so I'm just going to dock that off and I'll be right back so ears on everybody So as you can see, I'm swapping and changing my router bits, making sure that um, every time I use it, I use it safely. And a bit of dust on the old. This is my tenon cutter. Always good to have everything handy so that you can get at it quickly. And I suppose I'm like everybody else, I tend to lose things when I put them down, forget where I've got them, forget where I've put them. So my tenon cutter. Now my piece of material is exactly the same size. What, I, what I'm going to do with this is um, I'm going to cut a rebate. It'll sit up 
flush with the top. Actually, I should be using a thinner piece of material, but I won't. I'll use this one here, and I won't use that. I'll use, um, and you're changing your mind halfway through a job. I'm going to use the panel raiser bit to do this task. And I'm going to have to set it at two different heights. So my first height is going to be set at 4 mil. Because I'm not in the middle, I'm a, I'm a little bit higher. So I need to get that 4 millimeter set first. I'm going to have a little play with that. Actually, thinking about it, it's probably not a good idea to change change tack halfway through through a job. Um, I think I should um, I think I should use my tenon cutter. I'll go back to I'll go back to my original thinking. I'll use my tenon cutter and then I'll round over the front edge. I need that. Okay, let's go back to the original original idea. And my original set. Mil. Get my height. Four and a half mil. Make sure you're reasonably accurate with this one too as well. Again, same process, measure my tenon. Okay, so I'm right on just nine and a half mil. So if I set this at nine mil, that should be right. Set this down. Shift all my parts. Make sure I get the cut the worst bits off. I might use that as the inside and that as the outside. So I'll just cut the outside first. The inside first. So Push block. Okay, ears on everybody. Rule of thumb with that is cut your ends first. I've just cut the side first. It should have cut the end first. Reason being, if you have any tear out that occurs on the end because you've got no support along the grain here, you can pick it up when you do your sides. If you do this way, what you'll find is when you cut across here, you get the 
the tear out on the inside and that's inside your job whereas on this one it's on the outside which can be cleaned up so let me do that ears on <laughs> Okay, so that's my bottom section. You can see I've cut a nice little trench all the way around. Okay, so a rebate round there. Now I need to take the bit off the top. And this is not something I would normally do. I would usually normally just flip it over, but this time I've got to change things again. So camera comes back. <coughs> so that's going to fit like so. What I need to do is I need to make sure that it's set correctly. Okay, so I'm just going to hold that up against there. This is called improvising. And so now I have a rebate that has to happen right there. And I'm going to cut a little bit narrow. Set my height. You can see, it's sort of having a little, having a little play with it, and I'm it's sort of just making it up a little bit as I go along. It's um, it, and it, when you're improvising, just make sure that um, again, nice and safe right throughout the whole process. So ears on everybody. Nice fit. So now I do the others. Ears on. That's given me the edge bits always a little bit tighter. I need to take a little bit more off there. But as you can see, the grain cuts a little easier. And you can see, just by looking at it, you can see that's going to look, it's going to look quite nice when it when it's all fitted together. So those those sort of bits will just go straight into there. So I'm not going to force it at this stage. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it at that because I've got to trim it up a little bit more. 
I wanted to go on to something else that's quite important and something else that we do. But you can see the, the tasks are quite, quite, it's quite simple and um, it's just a matter of um, just adjusting it so that it fits. You can see I've got a nice little gap in there, so a bit of expansion. Um, so that's, that's quite a nice little setup. So just a little bit more adjustment and I'll get that and I'll show you what that looks like next week. Okay, but the important thing, one of the things that I wanted to do today was show you what I do with that, uh, the rebate. You remember the rebate I had with, with this box here, the rebate that happens down here and here. Okay, now I used a tenon cutter to do that. So um, we guess you only cut a nice little rebate along here, a nice little rebate along here. And um, that will give us um, a nice little setup for the lid. Okay. Now, this is the box we're going to use. So it's just another trinket box. I made this a few weeks ago. Um, you can see on here, um, you can see that there's just plain setup. Just where I've joined the box together, nice little dovetails, got nice little feet in it. I've used the panel raising bit to do the, the rebate cutter to do the, the trench in the bottom. So now it's just a matter of dressing up the rest of it. I've sanded it, ball glued together, it looks really, really nice. So here's how we do this. Okay. So I've got my tenon cutter in there. You can see the fence that I'm using this time is a fence that um, comes, if you buy um, a table, you get one of these little fences as well. This is um, made from um, the same material as the top, it's compact laminate. Now what I want to do here is cut myself a trench by using this router bit. And I, I left myself a little bit too more too much time. Not, not, not enough time I should say. So what I'm going to do here, if you can bring that camera in here, pointing stick. What I want to do is I want to find out which is the highest point from there to there, this side here, or on this side here. Okay. So I set that till it touches just in the corner. You can see that. Now the other side should be pretty much the same, so I touch that, and then I'm going to do this one. Okay, so this one is a little higher. You can see that slides over the top of that. So what I'm going to do is come up to this one. If I come up to that one there. Check that one. What that will do is that gives me, that will give me a parallel cut from here to here and from here to here. Okay, and then it's just a matter of dressing that. I know those two are parallel because I dressed those up before we started. So now all I need to do is work out how much of a step I want on here. Okay, so how much am I going to take out? I'm going to round this over so that it's got a nice rounded over curve there. So I need to have enough meat for that to happen. So all I'm going to do is just take out, say, a millimetre and a half of that. So when I set that up, what I'll do, just lock that in so it's not going to move anywhere. As I set that up, and can you get that into that close? You can see how close I am here. I'm just making sure that I'm right up close. 
and I've got the extra bit, extra bit there. So once I've got that, I'll then lock my fence in place. Now the important thing to remember here is the direction of cut. So what you want to do, the router bit's going to spin in this direction because there's the cutting tooth on this side and there's a cutting tooth on that side. Spinning in that direction. So what we want to do is we want to have it so that it's pushing our box up against the fence. If you come back and go with the rotation of the router bit, you'll find that it'll kick it away and end up with um, a very odd cut down here. It's not going to be straight. A very odd cut down here. Okay. So have a little think about that. So that goes there and then we're just going to cut straight through like so. So ears on everybody. I've got a couple of minutes to do this. Ears on. Ears on. <laughs> Now you can see the little step. Okay, so I've only cut a millimeter out of there. Um, I could take a little bit more, and in fact I will. That's not quite enough. So if I just bring that in another half a millimeter or so. Now when I pass over the top of here, what I'm doing is I've got my hand holding the material down here. I've got my fingers up against the, the fence so it's holding it in place and my hand is nowhere near that cutting, cutting blade. So ears on. <laughs> That's a better step. You can see just enough there to rest the, the lid on. So now I just tip it over to do the other side. Now you can also see, I've got a little step here, I've got a little step there, and when I turn the box around, I've got a step here and a step here. Now you'll notice also that this one is deeper than that one. In other words, the board was a little bit twisted. Okay, so now I need to make that parallel across the top here. So the easiest way to do that Shift this out of the way. And all I'm going to do is pass over the top of the router bit and I'll just move straight along this way. Okay? So ears on. So now you can see, nice, flush, clean, cut, and everything is parallel now because I've had the two tops of the, bar, the bench, the two tops of the, the box on the bench, everything's parallel to the tops of the bench, which is what you're trying to achieve. Okay, so that's how we do that. Then we go through the process of actually making the, the, uh, the frame and panel lid. Now, just before we go, there's one other little task that I have found works with our tenon cutter. Okay. 
this is one of our special jewellery boxes. And in the past, most of the hinging was done with hidden hinges or concealed hinges, round hinges. I found um, that, that um, not everybody likes those. So I've started thinking about different types of hinges. Now you can buy uh, side rail hinges, which go into the side here like this, or you can use um, butt hinges. Now the hinge that I find really acceptable is a stop hinge. Now a stop hinge opens out to around 91 degrees. So it's, it's quite a nice little, little hinge. This particular one is a butt hinge, uh, a stop hinge from Brusso, the US, US mate. Now, they come in two sizes, one and a quarter and three quarter inch. This one's a one and a quarter. It so happens that it's exactly the same length as the, width, the diameter of our router bit. Okay, so you can see that. So it's exactly the same size. So I can use that to fit my hinges into the bigger box. Okay, so this is how I go about that. Set the height of the router bit to the hinge. Oops. So that's the hinge thickness. So it's easy enough to do. It's just a matter of sitting the hinge on top of there and then just checking to see that you're flush at the top. Okay, you can do that, or you can make it a little deeper if you like, but that's quite a nice size. Next thing is to set where you want the hinge. Now, I have a set measurement of 40 millimeters in from the end. Okay, so 40 millimeters in from here to here. And I set my fence. Shake the dust away a bit there. I should set up the dust extractor one day. Now when I set the measurements, I measure through my two points to make sure that I'm square with the fence. And 40 millimetres. Just get to 40 millimetres, which is there. Fence in place. Now, make sure that you choose the right side. If you noticed I've, on the back of my box, I've put some markings on the back of the box and written back on it. So that's the back of the box. That's where I want the hinge. So all I am going to do now is just pass that straight over the top of there. Now. You only do this, you only do this, so let me go to this camera here, you only do this if you're making sure that your hinge actually appears on the front edge of the box, all right, so the inside edge. If you're making one that just recesses down and you've still got a bit of material there, then this won't work because you've got to um, use a chisel to square up the hinge and fit the hinge so that you've got a little bit of material exposed at the front edge of the, of the hinge. Okay, So we're, we're not going to do that. We're going to have those set there. I actually quite like the look of um, the brass on the inside of the box when you open it right up onto the edge. Okay, that, But that's, that's just my taste. So you can, you can do as you like. So all I'm going to do now is straight over the top of that. And it's only recently that I've found out this works. But you need to go slowly when you do this. Don't go too quick, otherwise you have tear out. So ears on everybody.
and there you can see a perfect fit. So that's nice and flush, and then I just a matter of fitting a, fitting a hinge. So going through that process. So what that's done, it's actually reduced the amount of time that it's taken to, to fit a hinge. It's not, it's not a perfect way, but it is a, a quite a good way of doing, doing things. And if I was doing a, a bespoke box, I would be doing it by hand anyway, so with chisel and mallet. So um, this is quite a good way if you just want to get things done relatively quickly, okay? So that's it for today, and we're going to stop right there. The, if you're flicking over to Dave, he's uh, doing a little, uh, a little project. He's making a, a mould for a resin pour. So have a look at that. And I do believe he has finished his um, camera stand, and the camera stand, I think he's got some pictures of it anyway. So stay safe, everybody. And um, if you haven't subscribed already, um, Subscribe to our channel and you'll get a reminder every every Sunday if you click the, the bell and um, uh, We'll come back to you next week now next week. We're going to finish off with um, the rest of the, the cutter kit This is the ultimate cutter kit this one here is the upgrade kit which turns it into a master cutter kit So this is the addition if you already have one of these. Okay, so That's it for today. Stay safe everybody um, Remember to go and get your jab. It's going to save everybody in the end, I think. Or at least I hope so. So, um, yeah, stay safe. Have a good week. And uh, I will see you all next Sunday.